Hello, this is XCOM, and this is a video on the Instant Wire video that I did, a follow-up on it. And now that Panic have released his new Instant Wire, I can actually show it and go through all the details about the new Instant Wire. It is going to probably be the best way to set up Instant Wires to chunk load, for example, for Perl tech or other means of remote chunk loading and sending signals through. It is a really good instawire that I actually think needs to be taken a good look at and made a deep analysis of. So first things first, how do you build one of these? This is the layout. I mean, it shouldn't be diff that difficult to copy. It has to be a sticky piston and a detector rail here. Nothing else works. And you have to build it so that the rails actually end up at the edge of the chunk border here. Uh, and you have to place three observers here or if you want to, alternatively, you can place an observer and a, a repeater at two. Um, these two additions are because of the auto saves that can break the instant wire. I would highly encourage to build one of these if you want to make it a dual directional inst uh, instant wire. If you're making a unidirectional instant wire, then all you need to do is to build the whole setup flat against the uh, in the chunk border and then the instant wire can only operate in one direction. Um, it does work in the other direction, but yeah, auto saves will obviously break it. So this is a unidirectional instant wire, and then you can send the signal in one direction. Um, there is a reason why there is observers here. That's because if the chunk unloads, the uh, instant wire needs to re self-repair, and without these, the instant wire kind of breaks down, and you need to either send multiple signals to repair this, uh, the instant wire remotely, or you have to go there and just load the chunk, and when the lo chunk loads itself, it repairs itself. Uh, it's a bit complicated, but generally speaking, just placing these will help prevent this instant wire from breaking. Another thing that can be done is to place a piston right here, and if I update this piston, it's going to be in extended state. It also can be facing in other directions. It can also be facing in this direction. I believe in some direction it doesn't work. And let's just figure out which direction it doesn't work here. Okay, it seems to be working in all direction in this particular spot. I don't understand why it does work some places. But what you want to get is this extended state. The piston needs to be in an extended state when it's on top of this block. Either it's facing this way or this way, some other direction. And I think if I tested it, uh, test it here, then it's going to not work in this direction. Yep, this is what happens if it doesn't work the piston retracts, and it's not supposed to retract. It's supposed to be in an extended state. So if you ex uh, if you place a piston here and it doesn't extend, then you have a problem, rotate it, and then it should work. So now that you have placed this thing piston over here, you don't no longer need any of these observers. Obviously, it's good to have them because this p piston, what it does is that it helps make this system autosave proof. Um, that what I mean by that, it means that if the uh, signal is being transmitted and you have a permaloader, then you will save the instant wire from breaking. And maybe maybe you don't want the instant wire to break um, because there is effects that can happen on this instant wire that you might want to prevent. Here's what it looks like when it's finished building. You place the observers in both sides. So if this is the A chunk, you have the observers going in that direction and that direction. You have three observers. You have the system in the middle so that it's not actually close to a, the next chunk border because then you, you will load two chunks. Don't do that. If you're sending signals in both directions, you need the observers on both sides. If you don't want, if you're only sending it in one direction and you know that you will never send a signal in the other direction, you can actually build a unidirectional setup where the piston is flat against the, uh, the wall or the chunk wall here. The unidirectional makes it so that you don't need to place the observers in it like in the dual directional though. I'm going to try to explain what I mean by causing issues with the autosave coming along and you don't have a permanent order. It's a bit difficult to explain this. I'm going to try to at least explain it because I don't fully understand it myself. But when you send a signal uh, regularly, you will get a signal being sent and on the other end, you will get a signal to come out. But if you don't have those observers, then uh, if you send a signal six game ticks or five game ticks before the autosave, the whole system breaks down. S and you don't have a permanent obviously. Uh, you, but uh, let's assume that you, but if you don't cheap out and you place the observers so that your self system self repairs, then your instant wire will be repairing itself 
if you're sending a signal six game ticks or five game ticks before the autosave, and there is a different side effect that comes out of it. The side effects are that the uh, autosaves will unload the chunks, and when the chunks are reloaded, when you send a single signal, uh, three game ticks before the autosave, on the other end, you get two pulses, two output signals. So if, by sending a single signal, you get two, uh, two pulses, and this only happens three game ticks or two game ticks before the autosave, and you get two signals, three game ticks apart or two game ticks apart based on the time, time of when you send a signal before the autosave. So the autosave kind of creates this double pulsing effect on the instant wire because you're doing the, uh, before, because you're basically using no permit order and you're using this repair mechanic. The repair mechanic actually doesn't cause the double pulsing effect. It's some weird update logic that I don't understand. If you're building the rail system unidirectionally, there is an additional weirdness that causes uh, the signal to become even worse than the dual directional setup that has a repair mechanic. But another weird thing that happens to it is that if you send a signal five game ticks before the autosave, then three pulses on the other end will come out. Uh, the first signal comes six game ticks uh, apart and then seven game ticks apart. So three pulses are generated by sending a single signal on this end. I've tried to extend the rails and shorten it. I don't understand why it happens. <laughs> Someone else can probably try to figure out this detail, why it does uh, create this double pulsing effect. It's something to do with logic that is caused by updates, by uh, piston scheduling, uh, chunk loading in a really specific phase. I don't really fully understand it. So maybe someone else can figure this stuff out. Another problem with this type of instant wire is just that it becomes update suppressed. And the way to fix it is to just place one of these pistons with the redstone block, and then this will become your extension to send the signal further. What's interesting about this instant wire is that you can actually send uh, signals every eight game ticks apart. But if you send uh, signals too fast, so if you send it seven game ticks apart, nothing happens. So the minimum is eight game ticks apart, but if you try to sort of shave off that timing, it just sends one signal and it doesn't break down. So it's pretty good that it actually doesn't break the system, it just doesn't send the signal um, too often if you try to, s try to send a signal too often. Given the system only has an eight game tick um, delay between the signals and you can't send signals faster than eight game ticks, the only thing that can break down is this redstone torch. That's, tor that torch actually burns out if you misbuild the system or when you're building it and it goes into this burnout mode, you just update it and it self repairs, the, oh, then it just makes it impossible because this is the fastest you can go with the torch and, and this is an eight game tick pulse. And if you send an eight game tick pulse to the system, then the torch never burns out. So during operation of this instant wire, it can never burn out because of that, tor uh, because of the whole sh mechanic behind how fast it can be operated and how that torch can't burn out with uh, the fastest the, the, the wire can operate at. So it's a really robust instant wire and it doesn't break down other than the autosaves that can be mitigated using this observer system that can be placed if it's dual directional or if it's unidirectional by building it against the wall. So it's a really, really robust instant wire, much more robust than the old system that can break. And in my opinion, it's much better because it also can be used in, dual direc in both directions. Hopefully you found some good use out of this video. Go and build this instant wire. It's much better than the old system. Maybe, uh, maybe for some applications, I personally like this new system. So that was that, bye.